Hello women made in the image of God. Today we are back with another Bible in a year video and today we get to read Jeremiah 20 through 23 and then 2 Timothy 1 through 2. So let's pray and read the word. So today we're going to read um, Help in God Alone, a prayer from Piercing Heaven, Prayers of the Puritans, and then we will pray also. Um, you know what? Actually, we're going to read Let Me Hope from Robert Hockner. Blessed Lord Jesus, let the faith of my soul be fixed and unalterable, one that admits neither doubt nor change. Let me, with full purpose of heart, cling to you, Lord. I see through your Spirit's teaching the Father's hand and approval in all your work and finished salvation. So here, let me be indeed... Let me indeed be fixed, and never be doubtful of mind, but live and die in the full assurance of faith. Let me be pleased with what my God and Father is well pleased with, always rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. That's good. Let me be pleased with what my God and Father is well pleased with, always rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. Amen. And then I have a bookmark that has this verse from James on it that I want to read to you. and Or this passage from James on it that I want to read to you. It's James 1, 12 through 17. Feel free to go there if you'd like to read along. And, and then we're going to pray. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. James 1, 12 through 17. Amen. I really needed to hear that, and I really needed to remember that, because it's so easy to be deceived at times, because we think that we want this good gift or whatever, but it's not really, we're desiring not a good, it's what we're desiring is not actually good, but rather, we're, we're t you know, James tells us don't be deceived. Like, instead, we need to desire God and the good gifts that God gives, because the gifts that he gives are actually good, and they're perfect gifts from above coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change and so um we don't want to be dumb and give in to any kind of temptation even if we don't even think it like looks like it's that bad you know by reading the word if something is bad it is bad our world may say something oh it's not that bad it is and also <sighs> Yeah, don't be dumb. Just God help us. And I'm just, I'm preaching to myself as well. <laughs> Speaking to myself, whatever you want to say. Um, so with that being said, let's pray um, before we read. Dear Heavenly Father, um, we love you. We want to love you more. Uh, you are the only one that perfectly loves and you first loved us. And God, we, we desire to um, do your will, oh God. We desire to delight in you, God. Um, Lord, I don't want to take my eyes off of you for anything. I want to keep my eyes on you and on eternity with you because this world glitters, and, and but it's not gold. And it's passing away along with all of its deceitful desires. They never last, God. Nothing in this world lasts. But God, you last. You are everlasting. You are the Father of heavenly, uh, of, uh, of lights. And you don't shift. You don't change. And neither does your love. You don't love us one day and then not care about us the next. You're not like that. You're not a man that you should lie. You are good. You're faithful. 
you're perfect, God, and, and that is so, so, so refreshing in a world full of liars, and when we see even in ourselves, like, we fail, and we lie at times, and Lord, we don't want to, we don't want to do that, we, our new nature abhors that, so Father, would you grow us in your Son, would you grow us in Christ's likeness, would you help us in the midst of our, um, neediness God we are needy and poor but you are good you are God and your gospel changes everything for us God and so Lord we just want to fix our eyes on you in this time pray that you'd give us great focus grow us in love for you Lord help us to know the love of Christ the depth the length the width the height the everything God um how amazing how great and how vast is your love we want to know it we want to grow in it we want to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, God. Um, we can't do anything apart from you, but you, you are the God who keeps us. You are the God that is able to keep us from stumbling to present us faultless on that last day. So, God, would you help us to fix our eyes on you and tell others to flee from the wrath to come? I pray all this in your precious powerful, beautiful name. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, that is all the text for today. So, um, yeah, what, or that's all the prayer for today. You guys, I'm so tired. It's a long week. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's read Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at myself. <laughs> okay. Open up in your Bible to Jeremiah 20. Let's enjoy God's word together. Chapter 20 Now Pasher the priest, the son of Immer, who was chief officer in the house of the Lord, heard Jeremiah prophesying these things. Then Pasher beat Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the upper Benjamin gate of the house of the Lord. The next day, when Pasher released Jeremiah from the stocks, Jeremiah said to him, The Lord does not call your name, Pasher, but terror on every side. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends. They shall fall by the sword of their enemies while you look on, and I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon. He shall carry them captive to Babylon and shall strike them down with the sword. Moreover, I will give all the wealth of the city, all its gains, all its prized belongings, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah into the hand of their enemies, who shall plunder them and seize them and carry them to Babylon. And you, Pasher, and all who dwell in your house shall go into captivity. To Babylon you shall go, and there you shall die, and there you shall be buried, you and all your friends, to whom you have prophesied falsely. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out. I shout, Violence and destruction! For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many fire, I will word, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout, Violence and destruction! For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, Terrors on every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him, say all my close friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps he him, and I cannot. It were a burning fire. I will not mention him or speak any more in his name. There is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him, say all my close friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived, then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. 
Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of evildoers. Cursed be the day on which I was born, the day when my mother bore me, let it not be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought the news to my father, a son is born to you, making him very glad. Let that man be like the cities that the Lord overthrew without pity. Let him hear a cry in the morning and an alarm at noon, because he did not kill me in the womb. So my mother would have been my grave and her womb forever great. Why did I come out from the womb to see toil and sorrow and spend my days in shame? Chapter 21 This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord when King Zedekiah sent him to Pasher the son of Malchiah and Zephaniah the priest, the son of Maaseah, saying, Inquire the Lord for us, for Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, is making war against us. Perhaps the Lord will deal with us according to all his wonderful deeds and will make him withdraw from us. Then Jeremiah said to them, Thus you shall say to Zedekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands and with which you are fighting against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans who are besieging you outside the walls. And I will bring them together into the midst of this city. I myself will fight against you with outstretched hand and strong arm, in anger and in fury and in great wrath. And I will strike down the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. Afterward, declares the Lord, I will give Zedekiah king of Judah and his servants and the people in the city who survived the pestilence, sword, and famine into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and into the hand of their enemies, into the hand of those who seek their lives. He shall strike them down with the edge of the sword. He shall not pity them or spare them or have compassion. And to this people you shall say, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. He who stays in this city shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. But he who goes out and surrenders to the Chaldeans who are besieging you shall live and shall have his life as a prize of war. For I have set my face against this city for harm and not for good, declares the Lord. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. And to the house of the king of Judah say, Hear the word of the Lord, O house of David. Thus says the Lord, Execute justice in the morning and deliver from the hand of the oppressor him who has been robbed lest my wrath go forth like fire and burn with none to quench it because of your evil deeds. Behold, I am against you, O inhabitant of the valley, O rock of the plain, declares the Lord. You who say, Who shall come down against us, or who shall enter our habitations? I will punish you according to the fruit of your deeds, declares the Lord. I will kindle a fire in her forest, and it shall devour all that is around her. Chapter 22 Thus says the Lord, Go down to the house of the king of Judah and speak there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah, who sits on the throne of David, you and your servants and your people who enter these gates. Thus says the Lord, Do justice and righteousness and deliver from the hand of the oppressor him who has been robbed. And do no wrong or violence to the resident alien, the fatherless, and the widow, nor shed innocent blood in this place. For if you will indeed obey this word, then there shall enter the gates of this house kings who sit on the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their servants and their people. But if you will not obey these words, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. For thus says the Lord concerning the house of the king of Judah, You are like Gilead to me, like the summit of Lebanon, yet surely I will make you a desert, an uninhabited city. I will prepare destroyers against you, each with his weapons, and they shall cut down your choicest cedars, and cast them into the fire. And many nations will pass by this city, and every man will say to his neighbor, Why has the Lord dealt thus with this great city? And they will answer, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God, and worshipped other gods, and served them. Weep not for him who is dead, nor grieve for him, but weep bitterly for him who goes away, for he shall return no more to see his native land. For thus says the Lord concerning Shalom the son of Josiah, king of Judah, who reigned instead of Josiah his father, and who went away from this place. He shall return here no more, but in the place where they have carried him captive, there shall he die, and he shall never see this land again. Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness, and his upper rooms by injustice, who makes his neighbor serve him for nothing, and does not give him his wages, who says, 
I will build myself a great house with spacious upper rooms, who cuts out windows for it, paneling it with cedar and painting it with vermilion. Do you think you are a king because you compete in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink into justice and righteousness? Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well. Is not this to know me, declares the Lord? But you have eyes and heart only for your people. I will build myself a great house with spacious upper rooms, who cuts out windows for it, paneling it with cedar and painting it with vermilion. Do you think you are a king because you compete in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink into justice and righteousness? Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well. Is not this to know me, declares the Lord? But you have eyes and heart only for your dishonest gain, for shedding innocent blood, and for practicing oppression and violence. Therefore thus says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, my brother, or Ah, sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, Lord, or Ah, his majesty. With the burial of a donkey he shall be buried, dragged and dumped beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Go up to Lebanon and cry out, and lift up your voice in Bashan, cry out from Abiram. For all your lovers are destroyed. I spoke to you in your prosperity, but you said, I will not listen. This has been your way from your youth, that you have not obeyed my voice. The wind shall shepherd all your shepherds, and your lovers shall go into captivity. Then you will be ashamed and confounded because of all your evil. O oh, inhabitant of Lebanon, nested among the cedars, how you will be pitied when pangs come upon you, pain as of a woman in labor. As I live, declares the Lord, though Kaniah the son of Jehoiakim king of Judah were the signet ring on my right hand, yet I would tear you off and give you into the hand of those who seek your life, into the hand of those of whom you are afraid, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, and into the hand of the Chaldeans. I will hurl you and the mother who bore you into another country, where you were not born, and there you shall die. But to the land to which they will long to return, there they shall not return. Is this man Kaniah a despised broken pot, a vessel no one cares for? Why are he and his children hurled and cast into a land that they do not know? O oh, land, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, write this man down as childless, a man who shall not succeed in his days. For none of his offspring shall succeed in sitting on the throne of David and ruling again in Judah. Jeremiah 22 Thus says the Lord, Go down to the house of the king of Judah, and speak there this word, and say, Jeremiah 23 Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people, You have scattered my flock, and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when they shall no longer say, As the Lord lives who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives, who brought up and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country and out of all the countries where he had driven them. Then they shall dwell in their own land. Countries who lives the day fall see, and shall execute justice of it are... Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. 
Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when they shall no longer say, As the Lord lives who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives who brought up and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country and out of all the countries where he had driven them, then they shall dwell in their own land. Concerning the prophets, my heart is broken within me. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, like a man overcome by wine because of the Lord and because of his holy words. For the land is full of adulterers because of the curse the land mourns and the pastures of the wilderness are dried up. Their course is evil and their might is not right. Both prophet and priest are ungodly. Even in my house I have found their evil, declares the Lord. Therefore their way shall be to them like slippery paths in the darkness, into which they shall be driven and fall, for I will bring disaster upon them in the year of their punishment, declares the Lord. In the prophets of Samaria I saw an unsavory thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. But in the prophets of Jerusalem I have seen a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one turns from his evil. All of them have become like Sodom to me and its inhabitants like Gomorrah. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with bitter food and give them poisoned water to drink. For from the prophets of Jerusalem, ungodliness has gone out into all the land. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, It shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, No disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold the storm of the Lord! Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who steal my words from one another. Behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who use their tongues and declare, declares the Lord. Behold, I am against those who prophesy lying dreams, declares the Lord, and who tell them and lead my people astray by their lies and their recklessness when I did not send them or charge them. So they do not profit this people at all, declares the Lord. When one of this people or a prophet or a priest asks you, what is the burden of the Lord? You shall say to them, You are the burden, and I will cast you off, declares the Lord. And as for the prophet, priest, or one of the people who says, The burden of the Lord, I will punish that man and his household. Thus shall you say, Every one to his neighbor and every one to his brother, What has the Lord answered? Or what has the Lord spoken? But the burden of the Lord you shall mention no more, for the burden is every man's own word, and you pervert the words of the living God, the Lord of hosts, our God. Thus you shall say to the prophet, What has the Lord answered you? Or what has the Lord spoken? But if you say, The burden of the Lord, thus says the Lord, because you have said these words, The burden of the Lord, when I sent to you saying, You shall not say the burden of the Lord. Therefore behold, I will surely lift you up and cast you away from my presence, you and the city that I gave to you and your fathers. And I will bring upon you everlasting reproach and perpetual shame, 
which shall not be forgotten. Be forgotten. Jeremiah. Wow, there is so much in what we just read, but I think I think uh, chapter twenty three stuck out to me the most, um, and the first and obvious, hopefully obvious reason is that it so clearly points to Jesus. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel shall, will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Amen. So good. And also just God's mercy and then God's holiness is super evident in this passage. And it's like, this is not to be taken lightly. To lie and say God says something is like horrible. And that's what people were doing in this time. They were saying peace, peace when there was no peace. When they should have been teaching people to repent so that they could turn back and be saved. Which is what we're supposed to do now as well. We're not supposed to go around saying peace, peace when there is no peace. We're supposed to go out out and tell people to flee from the wrath to come tell them the way which is jesus um the way to flee is to flee to god because of what christ has done and so yeah we are not to listen to the words of the false prophets that are that fill with vain hope but instead to run and set our heart upon our god um you know the the things that they were after you know god is like going to do destroy their lovers as he said earlier and what we read i think it was earlier and you know why would we go after other loves when we have the greatest love found in our our the lord our god we, we you know i'm saying this because i need to say this out loud and remind myself you know because we are so fickle at times but our god and his love is never fickle and he will help us if we are his he can save us from destruction. We need to take him seriously, love him seriously. Um, God is not far away. God, God sees everything. You may hide in darkness, but God sees everything. So, you know, he fills heaven and earth. Like, he is everywhere. Um, and so, yeah, no one will get away with their sin. But we who know Christ need to repent and grow. Um, you know, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, knowing that it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So you're leaning on God, trying to do now, if you are saved, it's it's not, let me be saved by doing good works. Absolutely not. No, it's you need to come and fall upon the mercy of Jesus Christ. And when the, when the Lord helps you to understand your need for Christ, and you repent and you believe in the gospel and you're putting your trust completely in Christ alone. Um, then now you enter, you're in a relationship, a reconciled relationship with the Lord. And now you want to do things his way. You want to grow and love him um, by doing what he says through his help, through his strength, through his grace. He sanctifies us and makes us more like Christ. Um, and now, you know, we need to, we need to take heed to this. We, we who have his word must speak faithfully. Um, yeah, God's word is corrective, but God, God's got this and we just need to speak his word faithfully. Unlike these false prophets, um, who just wanted to tell people what they wanted to hear which ultimately led the people to destruction. So it's not loving, it's the opposite of love. It's horrible. So with that being said, that was a really good chapter. Please continue to underline, highlight, pray through, uh, meditate on it, listen to it over again out loud, read it to yourself out loud, read it to yourself in your head, you know, over again. And But we're going to move on now to starting a new book. We are starting Second Timothy. So that's going to be awesome. But before we start 2 Timothy, we're going to enjoy Brother R.C. Sproul's notes for the Jer for Jeremiah to 20 to 23. And then we're going to read um, the 2 Timothy introduction notes from Brother Sproul and also from the ESV Crossway Bible. So, yeah, let's enjoy the notes 
feel free to pause and pray if you want to before i highly recommend it and then yeah Reformation Study Bible Notes, R.C. Sproul. Jeremiah 20, 23, Chapter 20, 21 Pasha. The name is apparently common CF 21 1, 38 1, each text possibly referring to a different man. Note that senior priests are among Jeremiah's audience in the valley 19 1, and Pasha is perhaps among them. 20. 2. Beat Jeremiah. Pasha's duties as governor of the temple include restraining those whose actions disrupt temple worship. 29 26 Dut. 25 2 3. Yet he does nothing about the idolatrous practices that Jeremiah identifies in 7.30, all the while persecuting the prophet by having him beaten and confined. Jeremiah's prayer in 15.18 shows that faithful prophetic preaching is dangerous. The prophet. This title affirms Jeremiah's status as a true prophet, despite the legal action against him. The Upper Benjamin Gate, a prominent gate into the temple. 23.6 Terror on every side. C. 6.25. The people should be afraid to be associated with Pashur. Because he is a highly visible example of why the Lord's anger is falling on them. He has abused God's prophet openly while tolerating false prophets. As a result, he and his companions will become living examples of the truth of Jeremiah's threats of exile. 27 Deceived me. Was deceived. Jeremiah did not foresee the trials that his task would bring, and he received his call ESP. Perhaps 178, as an overpowering compulsion. 410. He laments his struggles in prayer, wrestling with God, his enemies and himself, in saying that God has deceived him. He uses the same verb used of the Lord's strategy in using false prophets to tell King Ahab what he wanted to hear. 1 Kin. 22. However, God is not using Jeremiah like one of those false prophets, but rather like Micaiah, telling the painful truth to those who do not want to listen. 20. 8. For whenever I speak, destruction. A compulsion he cannot control makes him utter his message of coming wrath. See Amos 3, 8, 1 Cor. 2 Cor. 5, 14. 2010 Terror is on every side. See 6, 25. If Jeremiah were deceived and his message were false, then the authorities could act against him. 2011. Dread warrior. As is typical in laments, the prophet turns from describing the difficulty of his situation to expressing his confidence in God's power and protection. He anticipates that the Lord will act to vindicate him. 2014 Cursed. Unlike Jeremiah's earlier laments, 11 18 20 15 10, this time there are no words from the Lord designed to encourage Jeremiah. He feels alone in his depression. Normally the person who brings a father the good news of the safe arrival of a baby boy is blessed, but here the prophet curses him. The Spirit has permitted this record of Jeremiah's near-total despair to be preserved for the encouragement and consolation of believers in Christ. Great faith is not incompatible with deep struggles. The prophet's words are like Job's, Job 3 1 26. 2016 The cities overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah whose fate is proverbial, General 18 19 CF, is, 1, 9, Amos 4 11. Chapter 21, 21, 1, 24, 10. These chapters narrate the end of the Davidic dynasty, making it clear that disaster and exile are God's judgment on the sins of Judah's kings and people. Jeremiah denounces false prophets who lead the people astray, ch. 23, but also sounds a note of hope, as God promises to gather a remnant of his people from captivity under the leadership of a righteous branch from David's house, 23, 3, 8. The twin messages of judgment and future restoration are repeated in Jeremiah's vision of two baskets of figs, ch. 24. The name means, the Lord is my righteousness. See note on, sent to him. Zedekiah maintains a vacillating dependence on Jeremiah without the moral courage to obey his warnings, 37 3 21, 38 5 14 19 24 26. Having been placed on the throne by the Babylonians, he has only a tenuous hold on power, especially after he rebels against them. Pashur. Not necessarily the same Pashur as in 21 C note or 38 1. Zephaniah, a priest and the son of Messiah, 29, 37 3. Not the same as the prophet Zephaniah Zeph. 1, 1. In 2 Kin. 5 18 he is called the second priest. 21, 2. Inquire. A request for guidance. Not all such inquiries are sincere attempts to seek the Lord C. Ezek, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, B.C. His name is formed with Nabu or Nebo, a Babylonian god is. 46, 1, Dan, 1, 1. The variant form, Nebuchadnezzar, text note, matches the Babylonian spelling more closely, making war against us. Zedekiah has been a vassal of Nebuchadnezzar 37, 1, but he rebels against Babylon in 589 B.C. Nebuchadnezzar finally lays siege to Jerusalem in 587. Wonderful deeds. The miraculous works of the Lord in the past for his people, perhaps especially his deliverance of Jerusalem from the Assyrians in the days of Hezekiah. C. 2 Kin. 18, 19, 21. The Chaldeans. Chaldea is part of Babylon and the home of the dynasty founded by Nebuchadnezzar's father, Nabopolassar. For this reason, Chaldeans sometimes serves as an alternative name for the Babylonians. I myself will fight against you, outstretched hand, strong arm. The language depicts the Lord's power in war, especially during the Exodus, now horrifyingly turned against his people, Dight. 434, 515. 719, Amos, 518. Anger, fury, great wrath. See Dite, 923. 
21, 7, pestilence, sword, and famine. See note on 14, 12. 21, 8. I set before you the way of life and the way of death. In Doit. 0, 19. Israel is given the choice between long life in the land if she obeys the Lord or exile if she is disobedient. However, since the people and their fathers have already chosen the way of disobedience and death, the choice for Jeremiah's generation is simply between death for those who remain in Jerusalem, and exile for those who surrender to the Babylonians. Tentram, and not for good. In contrast to the Lord's good plans for those already in exile, 29, 11. 21. 11. Now begins a section of oracles directed toward the last kings of Judah. 21, 12. Execute justice, c 9, 24. This requirement of justice is expected, both of the earthly king, and the messianic king. 23, 8, 15, 1 kin, 3, 28, ps, 72, 1, 2. Rock of the plain. The residents of Jerusalem are confident in its inaccessible location, yet they will find their confidence misplaced, as the Jebusites did before them. 2 Sam. 5, 6, 7. Chapter 22, 22, O King of Judah. A word for any of the kings, serving as the prelude to a demonstration of their virtually unbroken failure. They sit on David's throne, but they do not follow his example. As in 1725, the future of the Davidic dynasty is tied to the faithfulness of the nation's kings. 22, 3, the resident alien, the fatherless, and the widow. Three of the most powerless groups in the community, whom the kings must protect. 22, 22, 24, I swear by myself. See General 22, 16, I is, 45, 23, and notes. This house, see 2 Sam, 7, where the promise was first made to David. House can refer to David's family as well as to a physical building. 22, 6 Gilead, Lebanon. These are fertile regions, CF 822 and note. In the prophet's day, Lebanon is well watered and rich in forests, especially cedar, which was used for the Jerusalem Temple 1 Kin, 5, 6, 10. 22, 7 Prepare, Lit, Consecrate. Language normally used of war undertaken by God for his people, is used, shockingly, of a foreign army arrayed against God's people. 6, 4, 5, 21, 4, 5. 22, 10 Dead, Him Who Goes Away. Josiah and His Son, Shalom, VC 11. Shalom, also known as Jehoahaz, reigns briefly and is exiled to Egypt in 609 BC 2 Kin, 34. This saying probably dates from that year. 2214 Cedar, Vermilion, expensive architectural touches paid for by oppressive taxation of the poor. 2215 do you think? Well with him. The contrast is between kingship seen as the exercise of justice Josiah and kingship as an opportunity for getting wealth Jehoiakim. 22, 16 is not this to know me. See note on PS 918. Knowing the Lord requires being faithful to his commands, Mike 6, 6, 8, John 14, 15, 17. 22, 17, your, Jehoiakim. Dishonest gain, innocent blood, oppression. Jehoiakim is guilty of all of the evils. Jeremiah condemns 6, 13, 7, 6, 19, 4, 21, 12, and CF, 26, 20, 23, 22, 19, burial of a donkey. The extreme shame of no burial, rather than the kind of burial given to family members or respected leaders. C. 733, 812 and notes, CF. 153, 22, 20 Lebanon, Bashan, Abarim. These mountainous regions lie to the north, northeast, and southeast, respectively. Jerusalem is pictured as wailing for help to former allies, her lovers themselves now powerless before Babylon, leaving Jerusalem to cry alone. 22. 22. The wind shall shepherd all your shepherds. The wind often represents the Lord's judgment. E.g. 411, the shepherds are Judah's kings. See note on 2 8. 22, 23, inhabitant of Lebanon. In the present context, this phrase is a figure for Jerusalem. The phrase itself is related to the close trade connections between Jerusalem and Lebanon. The temple and palace were built with cedar from Lebanon versus 6 note. The name connotes Judah's pride and false sense of security. 22-24. Oracle against Jehoiakim, here called Konia, after whose brief reign, December 598 to 597 BC, the first major deportations to Babylon occur. 22-24 signet. Represents the identity of the owner and is used to sign important documents. To reject it is shocking. This indicates a temporary end to the promise to David and his line. Jehoiakim is the last in the direct line of Davidic kings. Zedekiah, who succeeded him and who reigns when the Babylonians destroy Jerusalem, was Jehoiakim's uncle. Later, the same language is used to promise a renewal of the Davidic kingdom, Hag, 2.23. 22, 25 the Chaldeans. See note on 21, 4, 22, 26. I will hurl you and the mother who bore you. See 13, 18 and note. For other instances of hurl, see 1 Sam, 18, 11, John, 1, 4, into another country. This reference to exile in Babylon is fulfilled in 597 BC, 29 2, 2 Kin 4 15. 22 28, a despised broken pot. Jehoiakim is like the shattered clay vessel of Cha, O oh, land, land, land. In this address to the land, the Lord expresses his grief over his inheritance that has been defiled by Judah's sin. 2 7 and note, 12 4. The triple repetition adds emphasis, as with the triple repetition of holy in is. 6 22 30, write this man down as childless. Though Jehoiakim had seven sons, 1 Chr 317 18, none of them will reign as king over Judah. 
promises of future Davidic kingship, e.g. 2356, are fulfilled beyond the scope of the historical Israelite and Judahite kingdoms in Christ the Son of Man, Dan, 7, 13 and note, and the greatest son of David Matt, 22 41 46. Even the promise to Zerubbabel Hag, 2 23, Jehoiakim's grandson, 1 TR 3 19, finds fulfillment in Christ since Zerubbabel never reigns as king. After Zerubbabel, the monarchy is essentially abandoned until the coming of Christ, Mike 5 3. Chapter 23, 23, 1 The shepherds, the kings of Judah. It is typical of the prophets to use language imbued with shepherd imagery in order to criticize royalty. Elsewhere, shepherd imagery is used positively to speak of exemplary leadership, cf, ps 23. 23 3 I will. The failure of the kings requires the Lord himself to take control in a new way. 24 7 Note. Remnant. The gathering of the remnant shows the continuing care of the Lord for his people and his determination to fulfill his covenantal purposes. In the present context, the doctrine of the remnant suggests first of all the breaking off of certain of Judah's branches, vv. First, 2 cf. Rom. Following the king's neglect and the due punishment, Introduction, Characteristics, and Primary Themes. Bring them back to their fold. The Lord himself is now the shepherd. P.S. 23, Jesus takes up in the N.T. John, 10.14. 23, 4. I will set shepherds over them. Under the shepherd there will be true shepherds, who will faithfully administer the kingdom in the new age. Mike. 551 Pet. 524. 23, 56. Raise up for David. This messianic promise is a fulfillment of the promise to David 2 Sam 7 12 Matt 1 1 17, and follows repeated indictments against Judah's shepherd leaders. Despite the coming judgment, the Lord will install a future Davidic king. 23, 5, a righteous branch, a messianic term. C is. 4 2 11 1 and Zech. 6 12, where Zerubbabel is a type of Christ. Execute justice and righteousness. See note on 21 12. This messianic king will be quite unlike Zedekiah and Jehoiakim. 23, 6, Judah, Israel. The reunification of Judah and Israel marks the Messianic age. Azek, the re- securely. The blessings of the Messianic kingdom will include deliverance from the political and military turmoil surrounding Judah. The Sinai covenant promises this as the reward for obedience, but Old Covenant Israel never experiences it because of her repeated disobedience. In the future, the Messiah's own righteous obedience will usher in this long-awaited peace for his people. Name. In scripture, names are understood as designations of character, not arbitrary labels. See Emmanuel in Is. 714 and the names in Is. 9, 6. The Lord is our righteousness. Righteous rule is the hallmark of the Messiah's reign. Zedekiah's name means the Lord is righteous. 23. Out of the land of Egypt. Until this point in Old Covenant history, the exodus from Egypt has been the paradigm of deliverance. This future salvation from the north country Babylon will so far exceed the Egyptian experience as to replace it as the new paradigm of redemption. 23. 9. The prophets. See theological note, the prophets of God, on p. 279. Like a drunken man, Judgment is frequently compared to drunkenness in the OTIs. 121 23, Jer. 515 16, a state of staggering and confusion that ends with falling down and being unable to get up. As a prophet, Jeremiah identifies with those against whom he is prophesying and feels within himself the judgment that is coming upon them. The false prophets have no such compassion or empathy. 23, 11 Prophet and Priest. These groups are supposed to communicate the Lord's will to the people through bringing the word and teaching the law. If these men are ungodly, how can God's people be expected to find the way of truth? 23, 14. They commit adultery, his evil, right belief and right action are inseparable in the OT. It is no accident that those who have not heard God's revelation actively encourage evil. C921-23. This may refer to spiritual adultery as well as to physical adultery. The prophets of the southern kingdom of Judah have become just like the prophets of the old northern kingdom of Israel, which has long since been destroyed by God's judgment. Like Sodom, like Gomorrah. C2016 is 19 and notes. The comparison of Jerusalem to Sodom and Gomorrah is shocking and ominous. 23. 15 bitter food, poisoned water. See Jer. 915. The imagery in these verses describes a shocking reversal. Instead of a rich banquet, the Lord serves a meal of bitterness and poison. The omnipresence of God. When we speak of God's omnipresence we usually mean that his presence is in all places. There is no place where God is not. Yet as spirit, God does not occupy any place, in the sense that physical objects occupy space. He has no physical qualities that can occupy space. The key to understanding this paradox is to think in terms of another dimension. The barrier between God and us, is not a barrier of space or time. To meet God, there is not a where to go or a when to occur. To be in the immediate presence of God, is to step into another dimension. There is a second aspect to God's omnipresence that we often overlook. The omni, relates not only to the places where God is, but also to how much of him is in any given place. God is not only present in all places, but God is fully present in every place. This is called his immensity. Believers living in New York, enjoy the fullness of the presence of God, while believers in Moscow enjoy that same presence. His immensity then does not refer to his size, but to his ability to be fully present everywhere. The doctrine of God's omnipresence appropriately fills us with awe. In addition to the reverence it engenders, the doctrine also proves to be comforting. 
we can always be certain of God's undivided attention. We don't ever need to stand in line or make an appointment to be with God. When we are in God's presence, he is not preoccupied with events on the other side of the world. The doctrine is of course, not at all comforting to the non-believer. There is no place to hide from God. There is no corner of the universe where God is not. The wicked in hell are not separated from God, only from his benevolence. His wrath is with them constantly. David, who often extolled the glory of God's omnipresence in the Psalms, gives us a poetic summary of this doctrine. Where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. Psalm 139, 7, 10, 23, 18, stood in the counsel of the Lord. The Hebrew word, translated, counsel here, and in V, 22, may also be translated, counsel. Depending on whether the emphasis is on God's deliberations with the heavenly counsel, 1 Kin, 22, 19, 22, Job 1, 6 or on the counsel resulting from those deliberations. The word is translated, secret, in Amos, 3, 7. Entering 19, the storm of the Lord. Entering the presence of the Lord is often likened to experiencing a storm or a tempest. See Job 1, 4, 2, 3, 20 in the latter days. This does not refer to the end times, but rather to the fact that subsequent events will show the truth of a prophet's words. Jeremiah's prophecies are later vindicated by the fall of Jerusalem. 23, 21 I did not send. See 14, 14. Yet, they ran. Prophesied. The prophets are a picture of zeal in their self-serving propagation of falsehood. See Theological Note, Prophets, on P. 279, 23, 22 Council. See Note on V. 18, 23, 23 at hand, far away. Nothing, near or far, can escape God's knowledge, P.S. 139, Amos, 923. The Lord is not tied to a particular geographical location, as the pagan gods are. 23, 24, see Theological Note, The Omnipresence of God, on previous page. 23, 25, Dreamed, Dreamed. The dream is one way in which a revelation might come to a prophet numb. 12, 6, cf. Joel 2, 28. Yet such claims should always be treated with due suspicion, and tested against the rest of God's revelation, dite. 13, 1, 3. 23, 28. Dream. Word. Straw. Wheat. The false dream is to the true prophetic word, as straw is to wheat, only the wheat has any value. The question, what has straw in common with wheat? Probably reflects a contemporary proverb. There can be no mistaking the true word. There can be no mistaking the true word, because of its inevitable effects. Amos 3, 8. 2 T 3, 30 who steal my words. For a case of prophetic jealousy, see 1 Kin. 22, 24. The false prophet declares the Lord, and declare, declares the Lord. The false prophets disguise their own words as words from God by using the prophetic formula. Alternatively, the Septuagint, instead of, and declare, declares the Lord, has and sleep their sleep, which comes from a different but related Hebrew root. 23, 33. Burden. This word is typically used in judgment oracles. The people's desire for a message from God might sound spiritual, but it is actually a rebellious refusal to listen to the clear word that he has already declared to them. 2 Timothy Intro ESV Crossway, Introduction. Paul wrote this letter as he Those notes were so good, so good, so important. Um, okay, well now we get to start uh, Second Timothy, so let's enjoy the intro notes now to Second Timothy. Second Timothy Intro ESV Crossway, Introduction. Paul wrote this letter as he awaited execution, despite all that Paul was facing, death, the end of his ministry. Abandonment by most of his friends for fear of persecution, he faithfully directed his spiritual son Timothy to the hope that is in Christ. As he exhorted Timothy to boldness, endurance, and faithfulness in the face of false teaching, Paul showed his customary concern for sound doctrine. Scripture, said Paul, is breathed out by God, and is sufficient in all things pertaining to the faith and practice of Christians, 3 16, 17. Older believers, therefore, should be eager to pass on their knowledge of Scripture to those who are younger in the faith, 2, 2. Paul probably wrote from Rome, A.D. 67 or 68. 2 Timothy Intro R.C. Sproul, Theology of 2 Timothy. Paul in this letter takes up matters relating to the work of the minister. In light of the fact that Paul expected to die soon after finishing this epistle 468, this letter has poignancy and urgency. Timothy needs to know what ministry will look like in the post-apostolic age. Paul sets forth the contents of the message that Timothy is to preach, nothing less than Jesus Christ, as he is revealed in the God-breathed scriptures, 3 16, 17. Paul also sets forth the nature of the work to which Timothy is called. Preeminently, it is to preach the word for. 2, that is, the message that he received from the Apostle Paul, and that he must pass on to faithful men who will be able to teach others also, 2, 2, cf. 1 13. Faithful preaching particularly involves rightly handling the word of truth, 2.15, as well as patient reproof, rebuke, and exhortation, 2.14.4.2. The ministry will involve suffering, 1.8.2.3.4.5, persecution, 3.10.13, opposition, 3.8, and abandonment, 1.15.18.4.3. But the minister of God has the surpassing resources of God's word and God's spirit, 1.14.2.1.9, and he rests in God's good purposes toward his people. 
2 9. 2 Tim. 3.16, along with 2 Peter 1.21, helps to establish the foundation for the doctrine of inspiration of Scripture. Scripture is not a human construct, or the human sense of the divine. Rather, Scripture is the Word of God. Because it is the Word of God, it is both fully authoritative, and wholly true. 2 Timothy, in the larger story of the Bible. Christ appointed the apostles to lay the foundation of the church, Matt 16.18, Ephesh 2.20, Rev. 21.14. That foundation consists preeminently of the NT, which along with the OT comprises the church's Scripture, the Word of God. As Paul looks ahead, beyond the apostolic age into the coming generations of new covenant believers, he charges Timothy both to preserve the deposit of God's word as a sacred trust, and to ensure that this priceless treasure is entrusted to faithful future custodians, who will pass it along unchanged to the next generation. 2 1 2. 2 Timothy helps us to see the church's task and mission until Christ returns. The church's ministers must be faithful in proclaiming the word of God, that the elect may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. 2 10. Christ, in 2 Timothy. Paul reminds Timothy at important points in this letter of major themes in his own teaching about Jesus Christ. There is the person and work of Christ, remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David. As preached in my Gospel 2.8, our Saviour Christ, abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel 1.10. There is the doctrine of salvation by grace alone, God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of Christ, in 2 Timothy. Paul reminds Timothy at important points in this letter of major themes in his own teaching about Jesus Christ. There is the person and work of Christ, remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David. As preached in my Gospel 2.8, our Saviour Christ, abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel 1.10. There is the doctrine of salvation by grace alone, God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. 1, 9. And there is the doctrine of the believer's union with Christ, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. 2.11. These reminders serve to underscore Paul's charge to Timothy, that he must faithfully preach the apostolic word that has been entrusted to him. 2 Timothy 1, 2, chapter 1, 1, Apostle of Christ Jesus, 1. Okay, now let's enjoy uh, 2 Timothy together. So open up in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 1, and we're going to be reading chapters 1 through 2. The Second Letter of Paul to Timothy Chapter 1 Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, dwells in you as well. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love, and self-control. Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me, in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. You are aware that all who are in Asia turned away from me, among whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. May the Lord grant mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. But when he arrived in Rome, he searched for me earnestly and found me. May the Lord grant him to find mercy from the Lord on that day. 
and you well know all the service he rendered at Ephesus. Chapter 2 You, then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned, unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the ending cheats according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, and charge them before God, not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Workers, God. Remind them of these things, and charge them before God, not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed about He remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, and charge them before God, not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. But avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. They are upsetting the faith of some. But God's firm foundation stands, bearing this seal. The Lord knows those who are His. And let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Now in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. Sorry, I unplugged my headphones, so the audio quality is probably horrible, but I just love, like, how this connects to what we were just reading in, in uh, 23 of, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. Um, 
this is so good because it's like the connection is so it's yeah i mean literally do your best to present yourself to god as one approved a worker who has no need to be ashamed rightly handling the word of truth um and it just yeah so good so good able to teach um so yeah let's read the notes second timothy one two chapter one one apostle of christ jesus one sent out as an eyewitness of the resurrected christ and as his official representative two core one one note by the will of god paul identifies the one who commissioned him stressing that his apostleship is not due to human appointment or self-appointment one core one one two core one one if one one colonel one one according to the promise of the life that is in christ jesus the role of the apostle is to proclaim the life that is found in christ alone 1 tim 1 16 note 1 2 beloved child see introduction to first timothy date and occasion 1 core 4 17 cf note 1 tim 1 2 grace our lord see note 1 tim 1 2 1 3 5 as in most of his letters, the exceptions are Galatians, 1 Timothy and Titus's. Paul follows his salutation with a section giving thanks to God for the according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. The role of the apostle is to proclaim the life that is found in Christ alone. 1 Tim 1 16 note 1 2 beloved child See introduction to 1 Timothy, date and occasion, 1 Cor 4 17 cf, note 1 Tim, 1 2 Grace, our Lord See note 1 Tim. 1 2 1 3 5. As in most of his letters, the exceptions are Galatians, 1 Timothy and Titus's. Paul follows his salutation with a section giving thanks to God for the recipients of the letter. Here he focuses on his relationship with Timothy and his confidence in Timothy's faith. 1. 4. I remember your tears. Probably the tears Timothy shed the last time Paul left him. I long to see you. Paul anticipates his request in 4921, 1 5 Lois, Eunice. These women are named only here in the NT. They were Jewish, unlike Timothy's father, a Greek who apparently had not allowed Eunice to have their son circumcised in infancy, Acts 16 1 3. Nonetheless, Timothy had been taught the sacred scriptures from childhood, 315, and the seed of God's word had flourished in Timothy's heart as Paul brought the news of Jesus the Messiah to Lystra. See introduction to 1 Timothy, date and occasion, 1 6 14. Paul moves into the body of the letter. As he exhorts Timothy to boldness and faithfulness, Paul discusses the gospel and his own role in proclaiming it. Fan into flame the gift of God. This strong expression suggests that Timothy was being less forceful than he should have been in using the spiritual gift God had given him. 1 Tim 4.14 Laying on of my hands. See note 1 Tim 1.18, 4.14, 7 Fear or Cowardice. This strong expression was necessary, given Timothy's natural timidity and the gravity of his situation. 1. 8. Me his prisoner. Paul is in prison in Rome. 2. 9. Cf. Introduction, date and occasion. 1. 9. To a holy calling. The goal of God's election and calling is the sanctification of his people, Eif. 1. 4. Not. Grace. This is a marvellous affirmation, that salvation is by grace. 21. 1. 5. Lois. Eunice. These women are named only here in the NT. They were Jewish, unlike Timothy's father a Greek who apparently had not allowed Eunice to have their son circumcised in infancy, Acts 16 1 3. Nonetheless, Timothy had been taught the sacred scriptures from childhood, 3 15, and the seed of God's word had flourished in Timothy's heart as Paul brought the news of Jesus the Messiah to Lystra. See introduction to 1 Timothy, date and occasion, 1 6 14. Paul moves into the body of the letter. As he exhorts Timothy to boldness and faithfulness, Paul discusses the gospel and his own role in proclaiming it. Fan into flame the gift of God. This strong expression suggests that Timothy was being less forceful than he should have been in using the spiritual gift God had given him. 1 Tim 4.14 Laying on of my hands. See note 1 Tim 1.18, 1 4.14, 1 7 Fear or Cowardice. This strong expression was necessary, given Timothy's natural timidity and the gravity of his situation. 1. 8 Me his prisoner. Paul is in prison in Rome. 2. 9 CF Introduction, Date and Occasion. 1. 9 To a holy calling. The goal of God's election and calling is the sanctification of his people, Eif. 1. 4. Not. Grace. This is a marvellous affirmation, that salvation is by grace, not by human merit. 2. 8. 9. See Titus 3. 4. 4. 6. Because of his own purpose. God's decree and work of redemption is based solely on his own purpose and good pleasure. 
Elsewhere, this divine purpose is identified in terms of mercy Titus 3 5 and love, f. 1 4 5. Before the ages began. An affirmation that the divine decree of redemption through Christ is from eternity, Eph. 1 4, Titus 1 2 1 pet. 1 20, Reverend 13 8. In this way, Paul underscores this point that our redemption is entirely of grace, and not at all in response to or grounded upon our efforts. 1.10, The Appearing. Elsewhere Paul consistently applies this term to Jesus' second coming at the end of history 4.1.8.1 Tim. 6.14, Titus 2.13. But here it refers to his incarnation in his first coming. Our Saviour Christ Jesus. Christ is the mediator of the covenant of grace. Titus 1.4.2.13.3.6 who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light. That is, through his death and resurrection, Hebe, 2.14.1.11, preacher, and apostle and teacher. See 1 Tim, 1.12, I suffer. Paul is in prison v. 8. Paul's entire ministry has been characterized by suffering for Christ, Acts 9.16.2 2 Cor, 11.23.33. I am not ashamed. Having exhorted Timothy not to be ashamed to speak out for Christ v. 8, Paul presents himself as a model of boldness in the face of suffering. 2 8 10 3 10 11. The gospel is folly to a perishing world, but God's servants are not ashamed of the gospel because it is the very wisdom of God. 1 Cor. 1 18 2 5 Rom. 1 16 17. He had asked for the church's prayers, that he might not be ashamed of Christ and his gospel, but present it boldly in the highest court of the empire Phil. 1 19 20 Ephesh. 6 19 20. Now, in his second imprisonment at Rome, their prayers are still being answered. That day. Judgment Day, v. 18, 4, 8. What has been entrusted to me? This relative clause reflects the concise GK. Expression, my deposit, as a reference to the gospel of which Paul has been a steward and trustee. As he completes his own race, Paul knows that God will guard his own word from loss or distortion. Since God will do so by means of his messengers, Paul also charges Timothy, using the same term, to guard the good deposit entrusted to you, verse 14. 1 13 sound words. This theme runs throughout the pastoral letters, 1 Tim, 1 10 note, 6, 3, Titus 1 9 2, 1. Although only here does Paul indicate that these health-imparting words are arranged in a pattern, a system of interlocking and related truths. 1. The good deposit entrusted to you, CV 12 and note on Tim, 6 20, 1 15 18. Paul's concern that Timothy be faithful, leads him to set forth specific examples of unfaithfulness and faithfulness. 1 15 all. Paul is probably writing with intentional exaggeration to make sure his readers see the extent of the disloyalty. At the same time, he later expresses his distress over being virtually alone, through a combination of desertion Demas, 4.10, others, 4.16, and the deployment of faithful colleagues to other places, Crescens, Titus, Tychicus, 4.10, 12. Asia, dot a Roman province across the Aegean Sea from Greece, and today, part of Western Turkey. Ephesus where Timothy was serving as Paul's representative, was the leading city of this province. Phidolus and Hermogenes, not mentioned elsewhere in the NT. Probably Paul mentions them because he had counted on their support. 116, 1 Siphorus, a member of the church at Ephesus who distinguished himself through his loyalty to Paul verse 18, cf. 419. His proactive readiness, upon arriving at Rome, to find and serve Paul without shame, despite the apostles' chains, is a salutary example for Paul's beloved child Timothy, cv 8. 117 when he arrived in Rome. Onesiphorus may have come to Rome specifically to aid Paul, as Epaphroditus had earlier travelled there on behalf of the Philippian church Phil. 2 25, 34 18. 118 that day, the day of judgment. V 12, 4, 8. Chapter 2. 2 1 13. Paul again exhorts Timothy to be faithful in everyday life that emphasize wholehearted devotion to a task. 2 1 My child, see note on 1, 2, 2 Too many witnesses. This statement may therefore refer to Timothy's ordination through the laying on of hands by Paul and a gathering of elders 1, 6, 1 Tim, 1 18, 4 14. Faithful men who will be able to teach others, presumably bishops overseers, that is elders 1 Tim, 3, 1 note, 5 17, cf, Titus 1, 7 note. Paul draws analogies to Timothy's ministry to Christ from three spheres of vocation, military life, vv, 3, 4, athletics, v5, and farming v6. Then he summons Timothy to meditate on the implications of these illustrations, v. 7, 2, 3. A good soldier of Christ Jesus. Readiness to suffer, loyalty, and a single-minded commitment to please one's commander, are demanded of Christ's soldiers. For Paul's other uses of military metaphors for the Christian life, c. 4, 7, Rom, 13, 12, 14, 1 Cor, 9, 7, 2 Cor, 6, 7, 10, 4, Ephesh, 6, 10, 20, Phil, 
127 225 4 3 1 Tim. 118 6 2 Phylum. 2 5 Crowned. Crops. These athletic and farming analogies add a promise of future reward, which is the consummation of our salvation in our glorification. VV. 10 12. 2 8 Risen from the dead. The resurrection of Christ is at the center of Paul's theology. Rom. 4 25. Rom. 6 4 10 1 Cor. 15 12 22. It is the basis for the hope expressed in VV. 11, 12. The offspring of David. Jesus fulfills God's promise to grant to one of David's descendants an eternal kingship. 7, 12, 16. Matt. 1, 1. Mark 12, 35. Luke 1, 32, 33. John 7, 42. Acts 2, 30, 36. 13, 22, 23. Reverend 5, 5. For the association of Christ's resurrection and his descent from David, See Rom, 1, 3, 4, 2, 9, I am suffering. See note on 1, 8. The word of God is not bound. In his prior imprisonment, Paul saw his chains actually advance the gospel of Christ Phil. 1, 12, 14. Though under house arrest, he spoke the word, without hindrance, to all who visited him. Acts 8, 31. 2, 10. The elect, those whom God has chosen from before the foundation of the world to be saved. Titus 1, 1 the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. The salvation that comes through faith in Christ, 315. See Theological Note, Salvation, on P2058. Eternal Glory. This glory is the final complete salvation of the elect in the new order of God. The saints will have resurrection bodies and transformed human natures. 1 Cor, 1542-49. They will experience fully the triumph of Christ over sin and death, and know fullness of joy in a life secured for them by Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension v11, Matt. 13.43, 1 Tim, 1.16, note, cf, ps, 16.11, 2.11, the saying is trustworthy, see note on 1 Tim, 1.15, what follows may be part of an early Christian hymn, if we have died with him, a reference to the believer's union with Christ in his death on the cross rom, 6, 3, 11, 2.12, if we endure, this refers to perseverance in the face of hardship v10, we will also reign with him, a NT image for the eternal glory that Christians receive through Christ, Matt, 1928, Rom. 517, Reverend 324, 620. If we deny him, he also will deny us. A sober warning against apostasy, grounded in the words of Jesus himself, Matt. 1033, 213. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. This is a wonderful affirmation of assurance that, although we are called to endure and be faithful, salvation does not rest ultimately on our faithfulness, but upon the perfect faithfulness of Christ. Verse 19. He cannot deny himself. Christian hope is rooted firmly in the unchanging character of God Num, and his unchangeable redemptus one, and his unchangeable redemptive purpose for his elect. 613, 20. 214 quarrel about words, one of the characteristics of the false teachers, v 23, 1 Tim, 1, 4, 6, 4, Titus 3, 9. False teaching only ruins the hearers, but sound doctrine alone can save and restore its hearers. 215. The word of truth, the whole counsel of God, with emphasis upon the gospel, 2, 8, 9, 4, 2, 2, 17 Hymenaeus, mentioned also in 1 Tim, 1, 19, 20 as one who has made shipwreck of his faith, Philetus, mentioned nowhere else in the NT, 2, 18, the resurrection has already happened, this false belief denied the future bodily resurrection of Christians and affirmed instead that a spiritual resurrection at conversion, was the sum total of the Christian's resurrection, thus this false belief resulted in an overemphasis on present experience 1 core, 15, 12, 14, Furthermore, to deny a final bodily resurrection is to deny that there is a final reversal of Adam's sin, which not only introduced spiritual death, but also physical death. Thus, it is to deny a final salvation of the whole person in an eternal new creation. Consequently, such a teaching is heresy. They are upsetting the faith of some. The doctrines of the false teachers are at odds with the gospel. Timothy must warn the church about them v. 14. God's firm foundation. This statement is a reference to God's elect. CF 2.10, Titus 1.1. 1, 1. Stands. In contrast to those who wander away v18, seal, an expression of ownership and security. The Lord knows those who are his, a quotation of Num. 16. According to the Septuagint, in the OT context Korah and other rebels insisted that they had the right to demand access to God's presence, but the Lord reasserted his sovereign right to choose Aaron as his high priest to draw near in his most holy place. Inscribed on the people of God is his eternal decree of election v11, which ensures the security of the body of Christ. John 10 20. Let everyone depart.
perhaps also inscribed on the membership of God's people, is his call to holiness v 21, including the repudiation of false teaching. Paul may be paraphrasing, from the same OT context, God summons to the Israelites to keep their distance from Korah and his comrades Num. 1626. With, in accordance with illusion, the idea is that the false teachers are being exhorted to depart from their false teaching, perhaps in line with and developed in 225 26. 22021. These verses provide an example from everyday life of the importance of holiness, being set apart for a noble godly task. 223 Controversies. Quarrels. See note on 214, 1 Tim. 1, 3, 4, 6, 7. The Lord's servant of the law evokes the image of the servant of the Lord in Isaiah, who treats the bruised reed and smouldering wick with gentleness is, 42 1 3, applied to Jesus in Matt, 12 15 21. See also Matt, 11 28 30. Jesus' patience and kindness in response to obstinate opponents project the pattern for those who teach his church. 2 25 26. A Christian must never assume that those who are ensnared by the devil's false teaching are irretrievably lost. The gospel must be proclaimed to all. Notice Paul's concern for the manner in which Timothy is to engage his opponents with kindness, patience, gentleness, and the other fruit of the Holy Spirit. 2.18. The resurrection has already happened. 2.14. Quarrel. 2.13. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. This is a wonderful affirmation of 2.14. Quarrel about words, one of the characteristics of the false teachers. V. 23. 1. Tim. 1. 4. 6. 4. Titus 3. 9. False teaching only ruins the hearers, but sound doctrine alone can save and restore its hearers. 2.15. The Word of Truth. The whole counsel of God, with emphasis upon the Gospel. 2.8942. 2, 2.17. Hymenaeus. Mentioned also in 1 Tim. 1.19.20 as one who has made shipwreck of his faith. Philetus. Mentioned nowhere else in the NT. 2.18. The resurrection has already happened. This false belief denied the future bodily resurrection of Christians and affirmed instead that a spiritual resurrection at conversion was the sum total of the Christian's resurrection. Thus this false belief resulted in an overemphasis on present experience 1 Cor. 15 12 14. Furthermore, to deny a final bodily resurrection is to deny that there is a final reversal of Adam's sin, which not only introduced spiritual death, but also physical death. Thus, it is to deny a final salvation of the whole person in an eternal new creation. Consequently, such a teaching is heresy. They are upsetting the faith of some. The doctrines of the false teachers are at odds with the gospel. Timothy must warn the church about them v. 14. God's firm foundation. This statement is a reference to God's elect, cf. 2.10, Titus 1.1. Stands. In contrast to those who wander away v. 18, seal, an expression of of ownership and security. The Lord knows those who are his, a quotation of Num. 16. According to the Septuagint, in the OT context Korah and other rebels insisted that they had the right to demand access to God's presence, but the Lord reasserted his sovereign right to choose Aaron as his high priest to draw near in his most holy place. Inscribed on the people of God is his eternal decree of election v. 11, which ensures the security of the body of Christ. John 10 20. Let everyone depart. Perhaps also inscribed on the membership of God's people, is his call to holiness v. 21, including the repudiation of false teaching. Paul may be paraphrasing, from the same OT context, God summons to the Israelites to keep their distance from Korah and his comrades Num. 1626. With, in accordance with illusion, the idea is that the false teachers are being exhorted to depart from their false teaching, perhaps in line with and developed in 225 26. 22021. These verses provide an example from everyday life of the importance of holiness, being set apart for a noble godly task. 223 Controversies. Quarrels. See note on 214, 1 Tim. 1, 3, 4, 6, 7. The Lord's servant of the law evokes the image of the servant of the Lord in Isaiah, who treats the bruised reed and smouldering wick with gentleness is, 42, 1, 3, applied to Jesus in Matt, 12, 15, 21. See also Matt. 11, 20. 28, 30. Jesus' patience and kindness in response to obstinate opponents project the pattern for those who teach his church. 2, 25, 26. The Christian must never assume that those who are ensnared by the devil's false teaching are irretrievably lost. The gospel must be proclaimed to all. Notice Paul's concern for the manner in which Timothy is to engage his opponents with kindness, patience, gentleness, and the other fruit of the Holy Spirit. Cf. Gal. 5, 22. R.C. Sproul, ed. The Reformation Study Bible, English Standard Version 2015 edition.
Orlando, Florida Reformation Trust, 2015, 2170, 2172. Okay, well, sorry again for my lack of headphone usage at this time, but uh, that was really good. Please continue to pray through these things and highlight, underline, um, but let's close our time um, on this video in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, um, thank you so much for allowing us to read your word. Thank you so much for Jeremiah uh, today for us getting to read and uh, for Second Timothy, Lord, us getting to start Second Timothy and Oh, so much in there. It's, it's hard that we have to just zoom by all these chapters, but also good that we get to read so much scripture. Um, but yeah, God, we just pray that you would help us continue to meditate on what we read, Father. Um, pray that you would help us to uh, speak your word faithfully. Um, Lord, that, yeah, we would just say what you want us to say um, and that we would not listen to the vain um, false prophecies that uh, many false prophets go out and, and say, Lord, we, we want to we wanna be stand firm on your truth. We want to stay free in your truth. And we pray that you would give us the boldness and gentleness to speak the true gospel even to these false prophets, to call them to repentance. Um, Lord, that we would be uh, not quarrelsome, but good, uh, gentle, um, kind, uh, patiently enduring evil and um, correct, being able to correct our opponents with gentleness um, uh, and boldness as well uh, but a bold gentleness and um, yeah that you might perhaps um, grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth and that they might come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after having been captured by him to do his will Father um, we long to be yours and to live as those who are yours and um we don't want to quarrel about words would you help us not to do that would you please lord uh, help us to present ourselves to you as one approved a worker who has no need to be ashamed one who rightly handles the word of truth lord help us to endure with you uh, that we may reign with you help us to be faithful as you have been faithful to us Help us to never, ever deny you, because we don't want to be denied by you, God. Help us to um, love you and uh, forgive us for our weakness, and help us to please give us strength, Lord. Strengthen us in your grace, Lord, um, that we would be able to stand. Um, help us to teach others also, teach women um, that are in our lives, to, and to uh, encourage all people to come to you lord um yeah and help us to not get entangled with civilian pursuits help us to only aim to please you god because you first died for us you first loved us we just want to love you back god um you're the one who has always loved us the way that we need um and in saving us in everything god um we need you and we are destitute and weak apart from you um, so God, would you help us, Lord, would you help us to be like an athlete who does compete according to the rules? Would you help us to be like a hard working farmer who, um, yeah, uh, would you help us to be, um, like a good soldier, um, enduring suffering because Jesus endured suffering for us first. Would you give us the grace to do that, Lord? And would you, yeah, just help us to never be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor um, in suffering, but that we would rather suffer well for the gospel by the power of you, God, who have sa who has saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of your own purpose and grace, which you gave to us in Christ Jesus before the be ages began, um, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to, the, to light through the gospel. So, Lord, help us to fan into flame the gift of God, which you've given us. 
Um, and you've, Lord, you've given us not a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. So help us to not fear man, but to love them with the love that you've loved us, that we might share the gospel with them, that we might, um, and then uh, with the lost, and that we might um, love on and serve our brothers and sisters in Christ, and, and also serve the lost in the sense that, you know, you're, you're aiming to share the gospel with them and stuff. And uh, help us to um, walk in your power, in your love, and in, in, in your self-control, that you help us to have self-control. Um, yeah, we need you. We need your grace and mercy and peace to multiply your grace and mercy and peace to us, God, and help us. Help us to never leave you, our fountain of living waters. Help us to come back to you and to just cherish you the way that you deserve to be cherished and to walk by faith and not by sight, Lord. Just fix our eyes on eternity with you and living towards that now um, because everything that we could live for in this life will be taken away one day Lord, we want to live for you you'll never be taken away um but we will be brought to you and our joy will be made um it's already full because of what you've done but but it, it'll be made extra extra full so to speak um because yeah that's what you long for lord so Please help us, oh God, we are weak, we are so weak. Forgive us for, um, for just forgive us, God, because there are times when we don't cherish you as we ought to, and we want, we want to, we want to change that, God. Give us eyes to see, please. Um, yeah, we pray all this in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Okay, well, grace and peace, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to our holy, holy, holy God. The scripture is the word of God. Thanks be to God. See you in the next video.